Why pause? Yeah, John, that's right. I, if I were king, uh, I would uh, pause the rate hikes. Uh, I do think job growth is slowing. And, and here's a, 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 an important statistic. Uh, the In this uh, month of uh, March, labor supply, that's the growth in the labor force, is now growing more quickly than labor demand. Labor demand is in jobs plus the number of unfilled positions. That's the first time that's happened since the teeth of the uh, pandemic shutdown. So that what that means, John, is that the unemployment rate, which, as you pointed out, is low, 3.5 percent, is now going to head north. And then you throw in the moderating inflation and then you throw in the banking situation. I think that's the recipe for a pause in uh, interest rates. So is the risk now so much on uh, tightening too much, on raising rates too much, that there's not much risk of, of a pause letting the economy run too hot? Well, I think the risks are increasingly on the side of uh, over tightening, that the misstep here isn't the Fed uh, not raising rates enough to quell wage and price pressures, but over tightening, raising rates too much and undermining economic growth. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, given that uh, balance of risks and just given where uh, all the trend lines uh, appear to be pointing with regard to jobs, with regard to inflation, and still the you know, the uh, the uh, considerable amount of uncertainty with regard to what's going on in the banking system, financial system more broadly, given these high rates, feels like uh, this is the, the right time to, uh, to just take a pause, take a look around. And if I'm wrong and, you know, the economy remains stronger, inflation more persistent, the, the Fed can start raising rates again later in the year. Mark, how important is core CPI in the reading we get this week? Uh, because there is this expectation that we could potentially see that climb for a second consecutive month. It's, it's important. I think, it, you know, you're right. I think the forecast, our forecast is for the, to, to remain uh, un, unchanged. So I think it's just a little over 5% year over year. The top line number, though, is going to be uh, look really good. You know, some of that's just base effects given uh, the high rate of inflation energy prices this time last year. So we could see inflation, top line CPI inflation go from 6% in February to something closer to 5%. But here's the thing about core. You know, I think uh, what we can state with a reasonably high level of confidence is that is going to moderate here in the next, uh, you know, six to nine months as the cost of housing services slow. As you know, that's mm -hmm. the cost of housing services is the biggest component of CPI, over a third of the of the index, and that's tied directly to rents. And rents have gone flat to down here over the past three, six, nine months, and that will through that'll translate through to lower cost of housing services here through the end of the year. So I. Even if this number doesn't show uh, any significant improvement in core inflation, I think that's dead ahead. Yeah, and, and certainly it's part of the reason Wall Street's been focusing on so-called super core and stripping out yeah. those shelter uh, prices, to your point. The flip side of this, the fact that the market is pricing in in the second half of the year, not one, but potentially multiple rate cuts, what would it take, even if the Fed stopped pausing at the next meeting or at the meeting after, what would it actually take for the Fed to start cutting? Yeah, I, I, you know, I don't think they're going to cut unless we go into recession. So if we go into recession, which means lo lost jobs, jobs are declining and unemployment's rising very rapidly, I think that's uh, very unlikely that the Fed will start cutting uh, interest rates that, that quickly. So uh, I think the bar is really very high for them to actually cut rates. Because, you know, you go back to inflation, even though I'm arguing it's going to moderate, it's going to take a while for that to get back into something that they feel comfortable with, anyone feels comfortable with, you know, closer to their target. And that's not going to happen before the end of the year. That's something that won't happen until this time next year. So I'd be very surprised if they start cutting interest rates, uh, barring a recession. If we go, and, and that to some degree is what the market seemed to be signaling, certainly the bond market, the treasury market is signaling that yeah, the, the investors think we're going into an economic downturn before the end of the year.